Yo, yo, what is good, guys? Soldier Only here for Sports Nerd Web with the premiere episode of Talking Decay. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. It's just this new project we're working on, so, yeah, this is Fuchsia. This is, yeah, this is our All Walking Dead uh, podcast. I will say right from the beginning, obviously, there is going to be spoilers in every single episode, so it is your own damn fault. If you listen to this and you have and you're not caught up. Agreed. And I always say if you're not caught up, you don't have the right to say, oh, you're spoiling shit. Exactly. Because, <laughs> I mean, social media. Like, as yeah, soon as anytime something happens, I, bam, it's out. Exactly. Anytime, I, if, if I miss an episode for whatever reason, I, I go on complete social media blackout. Exactly. 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 So... Since this is our first episode, and we are what three episodes into the season now? Yes, yes. So Last night we, was we, the... we got to kind of, we're going to have to kind of backpedal. So let's go back to the premiere. Oh my! Oh boy! That premiere, <laughs> so so many. One of the best episodes ever. Yeah. Hardest it, one to watch for sure. It was definitely the hardest one to watch, and I, I just I can't believe Daryl, and it's. It was so heartbreaking. First, first, let's backpedal though. What? Who was your prediction before the season? What was your? Who was your prediction? I had figured, um, Glenn, just because of the comics. Just because of the comics. Okay. I was hoping they wouldn't follow the comics, but I was hoping you know, which is why I was surprised that they did Abraham and then Glenn, because that's just them to step it up how, yeah. as they always do. Yeah, and, and it's like I said in one of our podcasts earlier. Um, somebody actually put an obituary for Glenn, yeah. but and and it's like, yeah, that's sweet. You know, Glenn was an amazing character, but what about Abraham? Suck my nuts. Oh, I you love know, that he, he he went in such an Abraham way, though. He really did too. I, you know, the first hit of Lucille, and he's still just he still. But, he said, "Suck my nuts" after he had already been hit. Uh huh. Yeah. He didn't say suck my nuts, then got hit, and was like, oh. Yeah. He, he, he perked up, lifted up, said do it, you son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. He did it, and he still said, suck my nut. Mm -hmm. Oh, was that so was so brutal. intense. And, and and the thing is, is like I was actually thinking about this earlier today. Like, I, you know, eventually we'll see that episode again. You know, the, every Walking Dead episode we've seen multiple times. Mm -hmm. But that one, it's, it was such a hard one to watch. I remember, like, and, I just, it just felt wrong like the next couple days just felt wrong like the it, world was j just wrong <laughs> like it really did and i mean had had uh rick not been in such shock of losing both uh abraham and glenn i think he would have taken the first opportunity the second they got in the motorhome because you notice how how he Negan's did try like, though yeah well no negan's like you had the perfect opportunity and had he not been in shock of what just happened he would have been boom done and and but because of that shock he 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 was delayed he wasn't there he was you know, and then, of course, Negan gives him the opportunity, which you never want to go for an opportunity in a situation like that. If they're giving you the opportunity, they're playing you and you should know better. And but, one thing we've noticed already, Negan is always testing you. Always. Everything oh with Negan is a test. He's yeah, always, Negan. And it's smart on his part because he's always testing the loyalty of his subjects. You know, he's making sure that people have hasn't gotten to them. Yeah, and, you know, and change just, them and I can't believe the way he broke Rick though. I think like leading him up to cutting off his his own son's arm and his there's Carl just And Carl there. even told him do it. Yeah, he's just like do it, do it and he's like no. Oh. It's kind of interesting because how Rick said, "No, take mine, you know, don't 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 make me do this to my son, take mine." Because in the comics Rick is missing a hand. Yeah. I don't remember how it happened. I I'm not I'm not a I'm not an expert of the comics. I have read a lot of them, but I am just really I can't remember how it happened, but he has been missing it for a long time in the comics. I am really 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 interested on how the end of Negan is going to come and well, what's as far as okay, my you you know my whole history with the comics. <clears throat> I stopped reading them once they made it to Alexandria. Yeah. Cuz that's where it was kind of at, at the show and I didn't want to read ahead, so um, and but so as far as I understand, I think Negan is still alive in the comics. So, yeah. I don't know. I try not. I try not to really hear a lot about him because 
you know, yeah, obviously we're it's more into the show at the time, so yeah, yeah. spoilers, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's just, I I really wonder what's what's gonna happen in this season, and so, so of what's happened well, so you, far. You, too. you you've seen one of the 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 ad campaign slogans, right? It's that picture of Negan, and it says, "We're just getting started." Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's. It's it's gonna get more brutal, and it's yeah. That, I, I am still in shock of where it's going. That was a season premiere episode. That's like mm-hmm. that's like a season ender. But Walking Dead always does it bigger. They're, it's obviously not one of those shows like where, you know, they save all their big stuff for the middle or end. I mean, we've seen we've seen them lose major characters at any point during a, any given Beth? season. Beth Okay, exactly. Beth was a mid season finale mm-hmm. and the governor was a mid season finale uh kill off. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, so anything can happen. And then obviously, uh, Glenn and Abraham, those are the two biggest losses that Rick can have. Yeah. And he and he lost them both at the same time, like on mm-hmm. the same night, same moment. We haven't even seen that group yet since that night. This next episode, this next episode coming up next week, it's going to be focusing on our group, on the, on our survivors. And so we're finally going to see how they're processing it. I don't know what's going on in the most wonderful way. <laughs> yeah, because in... No. Well, actually, I want to go back real quick. Uh, just for the record, my prediction before the season, I was saying Eugene a lot. I was kind of expecting it to be Eugene. Uh, obviously, I knew Glenn was in the comics, too, and I didn't oh. want them to do that, but... And a little thing that you may not know is that when they were filming the death scene of Lucille and uh, Negan... They actually filmed it with every single last one. They filmed every character's death scene. Block. Yeah. So even the actors didn't know until they came back who it mm-hmm. was. That well, well, from from that from that episode's Talking Dead though, Glenn did say he did know for a long time himself. Mm-hmm. But only he also only read him. The comics. Yeah. Well, the thing is, the comic issue when that happened happened to Glenn came out like three years ago, mm-hmm. like two or three years ago. So True. so this has been a thing that that Scott Gimple definitely has known if he was going to do it right from the beginning, if he was going to keep it uh, like the comics. Um, there was one other thing I was But Glenn say. did say, uh, Stephen Yoon, sorry, Stephen Yoon, the actor who played Glenn, he had been saying that he it was it was really hard keeping it in over the summer to himself. Like, he literally couldn't tell anyone, not even mm-hmm. his wife. Yeah, and so, that, that would have been hard. Yeah, and I then how, I, I can't keep secrets. You know damn well not to keep <laughs> me with a secret. I mean, how do these actors do it? Like, you know, this big thing, and it's signed in a contract. I mean, maybe if I, maybe if I need to just yeah, sign the, a contract, yeah, to they keep sign a secret, NDAs. I can finally keep a secret. But other than that, yeah. some actors are phenomenal <clears throat> at doing what they need to do. So that you don't know. Well, they sign NDAs, non-disclosure mm-hmm. agreements, to where if if they did do something, that studio or film company, whatever it is, can come after them, sue mm-hmm. them, all this stuff. You know, they they'd be liable for a lot of a lot of shit, a lot of damages. Mm-hmm. But yeah, following that episode, in the second episode, uh, we got to see uh, it was Morgan and Carol's experiences in uh, the kingdom, and yes. we got to see King Ezekiel, and oh, I God. like him. At first, I was super nervous when when Carol first meets him, and he's just on his podium doing his stage thing, and you think for a moment that, yeah, I don't know about this King Ezekiel dude until the end where he has that moment with Carol, and he's like, calling out a bullshitter and he he let his guard down and you actually got, saw the real king ezekiel I'm i thought glad, that was cool i'm really glad they did that so soon because had they not i would have thought differently about him and i just and that's I why still, they did it because yeah. it was kind of corny but, remember the first thing i said when after that moment that opening scene of that episode i was like is this fucker off his meds mm-hmm. like <laughs> i really 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 love how he improvised i like how they said on talking dead that he improvised the uh you could go or not go, you know, saying that you could go out on your own, but you can also not go because right outside of their sanctuary is that house. And that's where Carol is at the and moment. That's, I, and I think that is exactly what she needs. She keeps saying she wants to get away. She wants to leave. She has to go. She has to go, but she doesn't know where. 
And she, well, because what it is is she's anybody. trying to. You said it yourself. You said it during that episode. She's trying to outrun the apocalypse itself. She's yeah. trying to out outrun uh, what she's done and she's, who she's become. She's running away from the apocalypse itself, and it's. And, and, and I you think, can't do that. Yeah, and King Ezekiel, I pronounced his name wrong, but he knows that, and that's why he's like, okay, I'm calling you out on your bullshit. I'm letting you know this is what it is, but I can tell you, you need your own mental time. To recollect yourself, otherwise you're just gonna keep running, and and you'll realize eventually you have nowhere to run to. But this way, she's still close. She's still, mm-hmm. you know, she can defend herself, obviously. Oh yeah. But she's this a way, she's badass. still not too far away, and she's being left alone. What it, which is it exactly almost seems what like she needs. yeah, and it almost seems like there's a maybe a romantic thing maybe that might that could possibly happen. I, How that I episode know. ended, it kind of he's he is finally getting through to her. Like mm-hmm. someone is, no one could like no one could. I, and Morgan even Morgan tried. could. Morgan has been Morgan trying tried. for a long time. But, and Morgan, but Morgan could. I I, I want to I want to expect or think that Morgan could. Especially well, because I was yeah, just going to say that the, the wolves and mm-hmm. and how she. You know, but I think by the end of the season, Morgan and Carol will warm up to each other. They will. I, I could think, see them I being a really will. working because, really good yeah. together. Once she comes to her senses and realizes that some of the things Morgan said is true, Morgan said and did is true, and some of the things that, and then I I would hope that Morgan actually realizes her point and her side of the story to where they find an equal balance between. Well, that's what's interesting with their dynamic is because. They can help each other so much because uh, she's she's fighting with this battle of that she's killed too many humans, yada yada. Mm-hmm. You know, like should you know, like how they need to do it. And Morgan, you know, his thing has been going where you know he doesn't, but he even said recently, like he knows that he he has to. You know, mm-hmm. like I mean, he's it's realized, such an inter- interesting he's, dynamic he's, going on there. He's now beginning to realize why Carol was the way that she was. That she has mm-hmm. to do it. Mm-hmm. So I think their paths are crossing on their own timelines at Ooh, the right time. I just thought of a good thing. Sorry, but Morgan probably doesn't know about Lizzie. No, he doesn't. A lot of people don't. Lot, Tyrese yeah. obviously knew, but did they ever even tell Rick or anything? I don't think so. I nope, think her and Tyrese never, just kept that to themselves. They they kept it to themselves, and they just said that she didn't make it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Tyrese is gone, so. Mm-hmm. Wow, I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah, but I also love how how Carol stepped up to Tyrese and was like, "I killed him in the prison. That was me. Here's the gun. If you really feel you need to kill me, the whole Karen and David you. angle. Yeah. yeah, I I loved how she did that because she she was she was facing her biggest issues and she wasn't backing down from them. And this time she well, just she was trying away. to pre- remember she was trying to prevent the infection. Mm-hmm. She was trying to save. She was looking at the bigger picture, trying to yeah. save. Yeah. Um, this latest episode, however, I, I really yeah, don't yeah, like what's his name. Yeah, we're going to get into that real quick, but I just want to say this about Carol real quick and Morgan. It's going to be heartbreaking because they don't know what has happened. Yes, and, and I, I wonder what's going to happen to them when they do find out. Exactly. All right, so now getting into the episode that just aired yesterday. yesterday. Yes, yeah, last night. Last night. Uh, it was a Daryl episode, and we got to see how he's... Getting along, I guess, at a sanctuary is what mm-hmm. they call Negan's place. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Negan calls it sanctuary. Uh, he's eating dog food. He's naked as Norman Reedus always is. <laughs> and yeah. Oh my! It it was a good episode, but it, it was a really psychological one. It yeah, was dark psychologically. Uh, and you find out the backstory of Dwight and his wife, and, and yes. what happened to his his wife's sister, and. I still, even with his backstory, I still don't like him. It, but there's so much more to come. Yeah, there's so much more to come. This next episode is actually, like I said, it's going to be focusing on our group at Alexandria. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, like I said, yeah, this is our first uh, podcast. And we'll, we'll see you next Sunday. Or, sorry, next Monday. Yep, sorry to cut it short, but we, we, we only got limited time. Yeah, enjoy this, too. Don't hate us. <laughs>